this video we're going to talk about the volumetric analysis and titration okay to before we talk about the procedures of titrations okay first of all we are going to learn how to clean the apparatus properly and also choose a correct indicator so apparatus used for titrations we need to have a burette so in this part okay you need to remember the function of it. So the burette are, is used to deliver variable volumes of solutions. Remember, the most important word goes to accurately. Okay, so this is also a very accurate apparatus to help in titration. But the key point is, okay, are different from the pipette. This one is to deliver a variable volume. But for pipette, uh, they are delivering specific volume of solutions accurately so uh, one is specific one is variable volumes okay and the other part okay you have to remember it should be the ways to wash it okay so washing a burette okay you need to wash with distilled water first and then you're going to wash it with a uh, solution that is going to be delivered but you can't say it like this way okay because this is too general so in exam when you're going to hold hcl or uh, using this burette then you have to say then or uh, rinse it with hcl okay conical flask okay, will be put downstairs to hold the analyte most of the time so this one uh, is a conical shape okay so allowed you swallow and the liquid inside won't spill it out normally they won't ask for function for this okay but again okay they will ask you how to wash it so basically for conical flask okay, you rinse it with distilled water only okay so this is also very important and for the standing clamp is going to hold the burette white tile will be placed under the conical floss for a clear observation of the color change okay so this one is important okay when you draw the setup of titration so for how to clean the apparatus actually you have learned a field apparatus already you have learned this one burette pipette conical flask short neck and then you have a long leg one okay volumetric flask okay so for these apparatus mainly asking for these apparatus you have to learn how to clean it okay so uh the rationale behind okay we are allowing water to leave behind okay we don't worry about the dilutions effect that it will bring up by the water or we want to have uh we'll allow to have the chemical leave behind we won't are uh, afraid that this chemical will increase the molarity of the solutions or the amount of solutions things like that this is what we consider but basically okay, uh, i suggest you to remember the shape of it so this one have two opening this one have one opening one opening so if you have two opening then you use two things to wash okay so we need to use distilled water and also clean with the solutions going to be held you see that i put bracket here so therefore i'll be specific hcl NaOH, whatever so two things okay you have to clean the apparatus with two opening so you're going to clean it with all uh, the burette and also clean the pipette okay using two solutions while the conical flask okay you just use water only okay and also the volumetric flask also just do the same so imagine right now okay if you just rinse it with water so there will be a few drops of water added into it okay so this water are uh, living inside this apparatus it will definitely have a dilution effect but remember dilution effect won't affect the amount of chemical so basically okay our rinse it with water only okay we don't want to have the amount of chemical got messed up okay so basically with our uh, rinse with chemical to be held if we rinse it with chemical to be held that means we are not only with water but also we put chemical in it then inside this flask we may have the chemicals so even you try to pour the unknown solutions inside okay you'll find that you got more unknown chemicals okay, than you expected okay so that will be a problem so the problems that may raise is if you rinse with chemicals to be held the rinsing chemicals stay in the container you increase the amount of chemicals so therefore it will also increase the or it will not necessarily increase the molarity of the solutions because uh, 
you're not just having the amount, okay, but also you have the volume in it, okay. So I don't think it will increase the molarity of solutions, but you definitely increase the amount of chemicals. Say, for example, you try to pour uh, 10 particles of HCl in it, okay. But, okay, if you previously rinse it with HCl as well, then it must be more than 10 particles. Okay, this one is so easy to understand, right? Okay, so more than 10 particle of XL. Then when you do the titration, you may need to have more chemical from the burette to have the neutralization. Okay, so this is the reason that we don't want to have extra chemicals in it. Okay, and then the other part, okay, it will be rinsed with distilled water and uh, the chemical going to be held. If you just use distilled water in this case, the problem is the water remain in the container will dilute the solution to be held. Say for example, right here, you have water, okay? You just clean with water. And then you try to suck up some stock solution. This stock solution, I've told you that, oh, this one will be 0 0.01 m accurately. However, you got water inside, then these stock solutions will be diluted. Same thing happened if you try to put the stock solution in the burette. If you only got water in it, okay, then the water will also dilute these stock solutions. So you make the molarity of these stock solutions, it will change. And we no longer know this standard solution. Not necessarily stock, okay, we say standard solution may be easier to understand, okay? Got it? So this is the reasons, okay, we need to clean the apparatus properly. So have a look of example. So now we are cleaning conical flask in your mind. Okay, you know that you just clean with one thing only. Right before titration, we should uh, use to wash and clean the conical flask with distilled water or solutions to be held. Okay, remember you have one uh, solutions to clean only. You clean with water all the time. So you use distilled water. Okay, the reason because okay. The distilled water remain in the flask, it won't affect the amount of salute. Remember, it won't affect the amount of salute. It is not, not affecting the molarity. Because if you have water in it, you must definitely dilute the solutions. Okay, so uh, this is uh, like this. Part B, wash, wash the conical flask may need to dry before use. Okay, it is not a big problem. Okay, if you dry it or not. Okay, because um. Maybe you don't know at this moment, you don't know uh, what we're dealing with. Say, for example, right here, you just imagine I have put all uh, the sample. Sample, you have, um, it should be a question mark of HCl number of particles. But if imagine, okay, we have 10 HCl particle of HCl, okay, 10 particle of HCl. And then we have NaOH right there. If it is like this way, okay, uh, this is number of mole, right? Number of mole. So we need to have to add uh, 10 NOH to neutralize this 10 HCl. Is that correct? So if we have water in it, it will be fine. Okay? The molarity, it definitely goes down. But the number of mole, it is the same. So even you have water in it, you still add 10 NOH in it. However, if we wash it with water, then with HCl, then it won't be 10 anymore. In this case, it will be 10 plus something. If you 10 plus something, this NaOH you add will also increase the amount of NaOH have to be used to neutralize. So you'll find that, okay, in this case, you will change the results correspondingly, okay? So therefore, you'll find that the conical flask we just used uh, water to rinse it and even we didn't dry it out would be all right because I don't care about molarity I care about the number of mole only number of mole of particle in the conical flask it will affect the volume of NOH added into the conical flask it will affect this one added into it okay so it would be like that next okay a student perform a acid alkaline neutralization uh, titrations so before a titration he cleaned the burette okay burette we have two opening. I be red. You have two opening. One here, one here. With this two water to remove the impurities. Full stop. Okay, that means to use use one only. So now you can see one more time. So right now, okay, if we have uh the burette, and then I got water in it. 
I got water in it. Originally, okay, I poured 1 m NaOH. I know that the solution is 1 m NaOH accurately. Okay, so it will be 1.00 m NaOH accurately. However, there will be red, you contain water in it. So definitely, 1.00 m, it will be drop. It will be lower than 1.00 m. If you don't know the molarity of the standard solution accurately how can you do the calculation so only use water to rinse it is not okay you have to use a uh, one m of NaOH to clean it once uh, we use that chemical to clean it once because we want to wash away we want to get rid of this water okay so after you get rid of it okay then even you pour the NaOH NOH 1M or in it, it won't affect the molarity much. Okay, so this is the reasons. Okay, we have to do that. He then filled the burette with 0.01M HCl. However, the teacher comment that the given hydrochloric acid had been diluted because you got water inside. Okay, should not be used for titration. Okay, so basically, after washing the burette with this water, they may left inside, and this one will um, dilute the molarity of the acid. Okay, so therefore the molarity of it, you won't lower it uh, any longer. Okay, so just how the burette should be clean. Okay, basically, first with distilled water, second with the chemical to be hold. In this case, we need HCl, so we'll be given HCl. So another piece of titration apparatus should also wash properly as in B. Okay, that means wash with two things. Okay, so that will be pipette. Okay. So next part, okay, we're going to talk about our two terms, okay, don't mix them up. So the first one is called equivalence point. Equivalence point in acid alkaline titration is a point at which acid and alkaline just completely react with each other. Say, for example, if you have 10 NaOH in the conical flask and you need 10 HCl to completely react with this 10 NaOH. So if this happened, okay, that particular moment, we call that equivalence point. So say for example, okay, you have 20 NaOH right now, okay, and then we put our uh, H2SO4 in it because this one is dibasic. So one H2SO4, they will give out two H plus to neutralize the NaOH. So therefore, this time I just need 10 H2SO4 for the titration. So after I add 10 H2SO4, I will believe that no more NaOH in the solution and no more extra H2SO4 in the solution as well. So this part, we say that it is at an equivalence point. So what is about the end point? End point is different. End point is a point at which we see the indicator change color sharply. But you remember the end point of the indicator will be different, okay? Or uh, between different kinds of indicator. For Miva Orange, it will change between like 3.1 to 4.4. Or for Finophilin, it will change from uh, 8.3 and 10. Okay, it will be between this range. So basically, the indicator change color is not necessarily equal to the equivalence point. So uh, we have to make use of this to choose properly which indicator we have to use okay so maybe at this moment you think oh or if i use limit solution that would be the best because uh when the solutions got neutralized it should be have ph7 oh sorry about that it is not correct different acid neutralize different alkaline there are uh, the ph of the uh, neutralized solutions will be slightly different, okay? Uh, but in details, okay, uh, that will not be part of the exam syllabus, okay? So um, I will try to explain a little bit, but that is not important, okay? But I'll try to go through it. So right here, titration curve, this is out C, okay? This is out C, that means uh, not in your syllabus. You don't need to draw this, okay? But this help you to understand why we use different kind of indicator, or okay? just have a look, see whether you understand that or not, okay? So if at the beginning, okay, we got the conical flask, okay, inside I got this one, okay, it's time with axis, say for example, I have HCl. You add NaOH into it, bit by bit, the pH would be going up. So you'll find that at a particular point, okay, the pH of the solution, it rise up, okay, rise up in the middle of this length. You can have a look right here. This distance 
you will see that it is just like a straight line but if you zoom in actually it's a slightly slanted line okay so therefore right in the middle of this line right in the middle of this line that will be the equivalence point so right here amount this distance okay the one in the middle okay will be the equivalence point so this one will be ph7 if you're dealing with strong exit strong base congratulations your uh, neutralized solutions it should be at ph7 okay so on the indicator that will change ph7 okay or anything that change within this range from 4 to 10 would be a good indicator from 4 to 10 actually you have a lot 4 4 to 10 okay actually all the indicator will change at this particular moment so for strong exit and strong alkaline actually all indicator will be all right okay but if you have a strong exit and weak base you will find that it will change color within this range that means from three to around seven from three to around seven three to around seven you just have these two or which is Miva orange and limus but limus we would never use it because red blue purple they are so close to each other so it is difficult for us to see so limus actually never be a proper answer for that so right here we will see that we have then use Miva orange instead okay and same things happen if you have weak exit strong base you'll find that the final pH of the solutions will be close to okay or above seven. So from seven to around ten, okay. So this one you'll find at seven to about ten, it will be phenolphthalein will be better. Okay. But for the weak exit and weak alkaline, you can't see the vertical part. Okay. So we will say that if you have weak exit and weak base, okay, there will be no suitable indicator to demonstrate the end point of it. Okay, so uh, basically it will be like that. But you may ask why they will change a lot. Okay, why this one is uh, lower than seven, this one is higher than seven, this one is a bot range from four to seven. Okay, that would be because of the salt it form. Say for example this one, if you have weak acid CH3COOH combined with NaOH, the salts that you produce will be CH3COONA. However, this CH3COONA, the CH3COO part, this one is quite reactive. It will react with the water in the solution. Okay, so say for example, right here you have Na plus, you have CH3COO minus, you have OH minus, uh, you have H2O right there because it's water. So this one will then react with the water. Okay, after they react with water, they will grab the H, okay, forming. Uh, weak exit and leaving behind some ionized OH minus. So therefore, you make the whole solution very alkaline. So you can see that if it is a, a salt solution with this salt, okay, the pH will be higher than seven. It will become alkaline. This is because of that, okay. But I assure you that this is not part of the syllabus. So what you need to do, next slide is very important. What you need to do is pick a correct indicator okay you say oh so many things to memorize no worry if it is strong strong you can use miva orange or phenolphthalein that means both of that remember never use limits second one if you have strong exit weak base you say which one you're going to use okay just think about like this although this is not a correct explanation strong exit so therefore the solution will be um, lower than pH 7. Think about that this way, okay? So strong exit, okay, because strong exit, stronger than the weak alkaline, so therefore the solutions will be lower than pH 7, that means the exit egg, okay? So lower than 7, it will be using Miva orange. Same thing happened, if you have strong alkaline, that means pH larger than 7, okay, larger than 7, so you use phenolphthalein okay but weak weak okay you don't have a suitable indicator basically i need you to memorize this one only okay the application is pretty simple say for example i have ammonia and then neutralized by hcl so you just need to identify this one is weak base this one is strong exit strong exit weak base 
pH smaller than seven, you use Miva Orange. Okay, so that is okay. That's what you need to do. So, all to summarize, okay, you clean pipette be red with two opening. First with deionized water, then you clean with solution to be hold. Remember, I put bracket. Don't write this. I will kill you. Okay, conical flask and volumetric flask. You just have one opening. So deionized water only. Sorry, only. Okay, and then equivalence point. It is at which exit has just completely react with alkaline. That means at this point, no exit or alkaline left. Only, only salt and water. This is equivalence point. End point means at that point, the indicator change color sharply. Okay, choices of indicator correctly. Okay, you try to match the end point of the color with the equivalence point. Okay, so basically strong, strong, anything will do. Strong exit close to the uh, lower pH side, Miva orange. Strong alkaline but weak exit close to the uh, pH 7 part. Okay, larger than pH 7, you use phenolphthalein. Weak, weak, okay, no super, uh, suitable indicator. Memorize this. Very important. Okay, that's all for this video. Bye bye.